Pablo, and thank you so much for taking the time out to listen. So we've got more familial challenges. Many individuals are going through it. And so we had to make a part two because some of you all over the years have talked about the things that your families have put you through. Sons, daughters, sisters, brothers, cousins, aunts, uncles, husbands, wives, everything from the lying, stealing to the cheating and the conniving ways. The enemy is using people, isn't he? In so many different ways. And the sad part is when people know better and they choose to go down the dark path anyway. They choose to go ahead and do the unthinkable anyway. Some individuals who have just made up all sorts of excuses for their abusive behaviors too. The emotional abuse, the physical abuse, the spiritual abuse, the financial abuse, the sexual abuse, so many different abuses. And they say, well, no, 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 you don't know what you're talking about. Or no, that's not abuse. No, instead, that is a uh, uh, shaming that's going on. No, 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 that's blaming that's going on. Oh, no, that's really just nothing more than a narcissist that's accusing somebody of being a narcissist. You see, all of the shady stuff that they do in communication, right? The deceptive practices, the manipulation, the power and control tactics, all because they don't want us to see the truth for what it really is. But as I do on this channel, I expose the foolishness for what it is. And we do it from a spiritual perspective. So thank you. Thank you for riding with me for as long as you have. Today, we're getting into the biblical verses as well as some stories and some takeaways, okay, with regard to these things that family members do, whether at the family holiday event or at your house or down the street somewhere, <laughs> you witnessed some things, or maybe you were over at the local store and you saw somebody go in. We need to see things for what they really are we are definitely going through in one way shape or another some of us already went through some things some are about to go through yes the familial challenges are all around but how are we going to deal though with the offensive behavior that's what I'm zeroing in on again in part two how are we going to deal with the offensive behavior how are we going to deal with the anger from a spiritual perspective? Because there's plenty of worldly advice out there, but we want to always go to the Bible, right? We also want to pray about these things. And we also want to take a look at the biblical characters and the things that they have done to uh, either overcome or the things that God himself ended up allowing them to go through. Yes, God will allow you to go through some things. Okay. It is what refines you. It is what and causes you to appreciate <laughs> the good times, right? Sometimes you got to go through the bad times in order to appreciate the good times, to appreciate those quality family members who had your back, but then eventually you didn't like what they said. And so you distanced yourself from them while you started riding with the so-called fun, cool type of family members, only for them to be nothing more than children of darkness. So now one has reached a place in a familial relationship where the offense is too much. The anger is too much. Matthew 18, 21 and 22. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times but 77 times. This is why for some individuals, I'm, I can't seem to let my sister go. I can't seem to let my brother go. But he did this, he did that. I know. But I'm going to keep forgiving him and keep forgiving him. But that doesn't mean taking him in among the brothers and sisters or taking him in among your children and putting people at risk of being hurt by that person though. When Jesus said that it wasn't for us to keep being abused and used by people. What we're doing is we're not holding things against them 77 times. I realize that you do what you do. 
but I also understand that I've got to protect myself. Do you understand, brother? Oh, yeah, I understand. Okay. Do you understand, sister? Oh, I get it. Okay. But I'm not holding grudges against you. <laughs> you see, I get why you do what you do. You know, the drugs, the alcohol, the crazy making man that you got, right? Your wayward in the faith children, your people that you got to deal with on the job. I mean, I get it. Nobody's over here holding no grudges. But don't shut people out, Lord Jesus. Because you disagree or you don't like and you don't even have the whole story. Or formulate judgments based on what other people said. And for some individuals, they're not even around any longer. So the dramas and traumas that the deceased left behind, people are still holding that up. And God is saying, let it go. Proverbs 10 and 12. Hatred stirs up conflict. Hold on to that before I get into the next part, because some people go, yes, there's another part to that. Yes, of course there is. But for you, you need to stay right there where it says hatred stirs up conflict. Well, I'm not hating on anyone. Mm. There's people who look out the window and they see their neighbor and they're hating. And then they go back and they talk to spouses about that one. Mm -hmm. God hears some people. They don't have a spouse to do that with any longer, but they still got their hatred. So it's not even about the family. It's about the neighbors, the neighbors who observe you and yours, the neighbors who witness a thing or two, the neighbors who they go and they talk about you and your people. Whether you keeping up your property, whether you're not keeping up your property, whether you're too loud or too quiet. Somebody is hating on someone. I can feel it heavy in his spirit. And that hate is what's stirring up the conflicts in the household. And the household eventually gets so filled up with the conflict that it spills out into the street. Now, this hasn't happened yet, but it will be. Because she thinks that it's just a little statement here and there. And I'm just getting some things off my chest. But somebody's harboring that. And they're harboring it in such a way where it is going to roll out there in the street but is the next part of the scripture hatred stirs up conflict but love love covers over all wrongs that's why you hear some individuals who say i know that's my child but i love them i love her it's my love that's covering over these wrongs. A police officer says, you know, your son, your daughter. Yes. And despite all of what he or she has done, you still love that child, huh? Yes, I do. That's a lot of love. I know. It comes from God because if I didn't have God, I would be hating on that child and stirring up my own share of conflict. You see, you see how this works. Somebody receive it right now in the name of Jesus. We declare and decree that someone is going to let go of hate and that they're going to receive love in Jesus mighty name. Romans 12, 17 and 21. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Let's stay right there because isn't it really tempting? Mm -hmm. Oh, I want to go over there and I want to hurt that one. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. You really don't want to do that. You got kids, you know, sometimes that has a way of coming back on your children. I remember talking to uh, a relative years ago and I said, you know, what you're doing out there is bringing problems upon us. You didn't think about that while you trying to repay people evil. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right. Do what is right. Do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Do what is right. Do 
do what is right. Something came into my spirit. Every now and again, this happens to me when there's that pause and you're like, is she still talking? And sometimes it shows up because there is people that are near me, close to me, and they're not doing something that God is pleased with. And so there's an interruption where I'm not just praying for the listener. In the spiritual realm, I see some things that go on. And so I have to pray for relatives as well. When you do what is right in the eyes of everyone, nobody can show up with. You see, remember that day when you, and you can fill in a blank, whatever that negative was, you see. In the presence of people, it is so important to do what is right. A man doesn't appear to be right because he tells a lie and then he tells another lie and another lie he wasn't careful all he had to do was tell the truth you see a man doesn't take care of his responsibilities with regard to his children and instead, money is allocated to people who are not his children. And so, judge looks and says, the evidence shows that you got a lot of money to give to this one and that one. So, I order X amount of dollars. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. I order X amount of dollars. Quiet. You should have thought about that before you were spending money on these different women. You see, you see how this goes? Giving all sorts of examples as I'm seeing them in the spiritual realm. Because you all, some of you all that come through here, you didn't do what was right. You see. I also see where a woman, she says, well, I don't have to do this and I don't have to do that at the job and somebody calls her out on it and then she needs something from a manager and the manager remembers she wasn't doing this she wasn't doing that I'm not giving her anything you see these sorts of meetings go on I've been in uh, in HR as an assistant as a temp people they want a lot of things but then HR goes back and talks to a manager and the manager goes let me tell you about this employee the things that I've observed, not an honest person, walks around here, doesn't wear a wedding ring, not an honest person, tells all sorts of half truths, white lies, not a timely person, doesn't turn information in on time, doesn't show up to work on time, a person full of excuses every time you call them out on something, very defensive, very stubborn, I don't know what home life is like, but I can tell you that this is not a person that I want to work here. Could have had opportunity, you see. Could have had favor. Employee shows up wanting to work some things out and instead is escorted off by security. There are those individuals who God is telling you the truth, but you don't want to see it. There are those who God wants to make honest men and women. And instead, when the opportunity comes to be honest, you tell a lie. And so what is out there in the street shows up on the home front. 
and the wife is upset or the husband is upset or the children are upset. Somebody's upset in the household because something that should have stayed out there in the street shows up at the doorstep or in an email or shows up on a Facebook post. Or shows up through a text message. Many a wife got surprised at the time of this recording because her husband was out of pocket. And my heart is heavy because I know what that feels like. This isn't my first rodeo. But just because she doesn't say anything doesn't mean that she's not hurt. And just because she's not filing divorce papers doesn't mean that it won't happen. And just because a husband has his share of issues with a wife doesn't mean that he's not thinking about what his next move is. Concerning a life without her. Don't take kindness for weakness. Don't take someone for granted. Assuming that they're always going to be there. A lot of subjects. A lot of subjects that I'm hitting on today. And not every subject is about me. Thank you very much. <laughs> there are those individuals who are very disappointed in their parents, in their grandparents, in those that are supposed to be mentors, people who they look up to. Doing what is right in the eyes of everyone requires work. It requires movement. It requires action. It requires somebody getting up off a couch out of a chair. Doing what is right requires walking in decency, in honor, and not in a way that is prideful. As my mother used to say back in the day, one sniffing himself. Mm -hmm. You see? Oh, so you sniffing yourself. You think you, <laughs> you think your poop don't stink. You think you good, huh? You think you, you know, got it on lock in the hood, huh? You pimp, player, hustler, gambler. You never learn, do you? What's up, pimp? How you feeling, pimp? He out in them streets and he's still doing the same old, same old. And he how old? It all seems fun and cool until somebody gets hurt. Until somebody wants to hurt somebody. If he was doing what was right in the eyes of everyone, his wife wouldn't be ashamed. His children wouldn't be upset. If she did what was right in front of everyone, the girls over there in the corner wouldn't be calling her a slut, a whore. Watch a man around her, around her. If the child did what was right, the parent wouldn't have to resort to what Bible say. And I'll leave that up to the Christian parents because you know. Scripture says, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. But peace comes with a price at times, doesn't it? Somebody says, I need peace of mind. Somebody else says, I need peace in this marriage. Somebody else says, I need peace when it comes to parenting. I need peace on this block. I need peace. Mm. Lord Jesus, I need peace. The Lord says, what are you willing to give up? What are you willing to stop doing in order to get peace? You've been acting like that for years. You've been lying and covering up and being secretive for years. You know you have a problem, man, woman. 
You're not going to get peace if you're not willing to change from your wickedness. If you're not willing to get the, get the counseling once again, but I don't like counseling. It doesn't matter what you like. Don't you want peace? I guess you guess now, huh? Did, do you, or do you not want peace? If I got to do this, that, and the other, then you just won't have peace then. All right, next, you can click off. <laughs> you see, you can click off. I only speak to people who's willing to do the right thing. I'm willing to go all in for the one who's willing to do the right thing. I don't go all in for the one who still says that I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm fine. I don't. Matter of fact, I want him gone. I want her gone. When I know that there's problems in the camp, somebody's delusional. We call that delusion. You see, you want to see things the way you want to see them, despite there's fire all around. You about to burn up. And this is where looking at the glass half full doesn't work. That's why I don't like those sorts of teachers that only want you to focus in on the positive. And if I'm only focusing on the positive, no, I need some teachers that look at reality for what it is. You know, the Dr. Phil type of individuals that tell you the truth. First Peter 4 and 8, above all, love each other deeply. There's a husband that doesn't love his wife deeply. He doesn't even know what that means. There is a wife who doesn't know what that means. Deeply, above all, love each other deeply. It's simple, but yet you're overthinking it. It really is. Deeply. Think about God. He loves us deeply. Deeply means that no matter what... There is this love that I still have for you, even though you're going through the fire, though. Even though you got to learn this life lesson and know you can't use my credit or my money for this one. Ooh, somebody else, you can't use my car <laughs> for this one. You can't use my good name for this one. But I love you deeply, though. I love you in a way that I can't explain it. I experience that type of love. It's that kind of love that there is no words for it. Everybody is looking at you like, why do you love that person? Why not? Why do you spend time loving on strangers? Don't you have to know them in order to love them? Not in the way that God loves them. No, I don't. Somebody needs to hear that someone loves you deeply. I love you deeply. Not in the way that man or woman loves you. It is a love that God puts on my heart. But I did this and I did that. I know you did. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening. I love you deeply so much to tell you the truth. A parent doesn't love a child if you can't tell that child the truth. You you know you don't. You don't love them. No, 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 no. You don't love them. You can't convince me that you love them because you're letting them go out there and do whatever. I go to bat for mine. I fight with them. Not physically but in their face like a drill sergeant sometimes because I don't want them to go out there and mess up and be y'all you all's problem you see somebody hold on to that you need to demonstrate love you really do above all love each other deeply because love does what it covers over a multitude of sins. I know you did this. I know you said that. 
the type of things that we don't discuss in the comment section. But it's been done. And some of this stuff passed in the spiritual realm like a trailer. Little clips. I saw where one relative most recently is prophetic. But literally I saw blood all over this person. It's prophetic, which means it's to come. Now, to get that type of revelation on someone. And there's no way for me to find out how, when, nothing. You just know. Why would God do that? He loves me deeply. He loves me deeply. And his love. What Jesus the blood that Jesus shed on the cross. His only son covers over the sins of the one. Who in the future will be in trouble. God's like I'm preparing you. God is preparing A deep love goes beyond what one does in a bedroom where there's a penetra pen penetration and they're saying something about going in deep. Oh, yeah, this is getting really close to home. Going in deep, wanting the deepest of deep. The act of that encounter having no ring on one's finger, having not walked down the aisle, but just the mere act creates a connection. And when that connection is not meant to be, it is filled with sorrow. It is filled with sorrow. The deep love is reserved for the wife. For the husband, not for the lover. That's why she feels empty after she's done. But he went in deep. That was just the act. There's no emotion there. Men have said time and time again, especially cheating men, that once approached by the wife, it was nothing. I don't have feelings for her like that. And he doesn't. God didn't create a man to have feelings like that. For his flings. He created man to have feelings, deep feelings, a deep love for his wife. And no matter how much you give and how much you provide, and no matter even if she was the old wife from back in the day, if he never had a love for her from the beginning. And she thought that she could wife him and suddenly that was going to show up. She, she, she's mistaken. It doesn't just show up. It has to be a connection that God ordained from the start. And many of us, we learn the hard way that we were all nothing more than what? Lovers with rings. Even the oldest of oldest. You were just a lover with a ring. I remember a, a woman told me, a man don't want nothing old. <laughs> I said, the worldly man don't want nothing old. She said, a man don't want nothing old. This is why women spend so much money looking young. This is why God even will move on a woman at some point to decorate herself because he knows what he's created. He knows the society that man has created. Of course, in the beginning, in the beginning, it didn't matter, right? 
Eve was going to be Eve, Adam was going to be Adam, and we were going to grow old together. <laughs> you got to pray those type of prayers where God blesses you with someone who ages or relevant that God moves on that man's spirit or that woman's spirit ages irrelevant this is a familial challenge for some she doesn't look like she once looked Lord that's why I'm not attracted to her so I went out and I did whatever but I love her And that's all she has to do is just doll herself up. I mean, there's probably some other things, but if that's all he's really asking for. But does it guarantee that he's going to be faithful? Nope. <laughs> so we have some biblical stories. David and Absalom. Second Samuel 13 and 18. There is this rebellion that takes place. This is another familial challenge. And this rebellion where David's son Absalom rebels, it leads to a conflict and then Absalom's eventual death. There's this betrayal that takes place and David, he's mourning the loss. When there is a parental love combined with, in this case, we're using parental love now. We've already talked about the marital, familial challenge. But when there's this parental love combined with this pain of familial betrayal, it can be hard to have a deep love for a son, for a daughter. Okay, and that's all the more reason why we pray, why we trust in the one true God, because he built us, he created us, he knows what he put walking among us. Okay, another example is Numbers 12, 1 through 15. Except this time, though, this is where the idea that someone's talking about another one who I did for you. You see, here is Miriam and Aaron who oppose Moses. Now, we know Moses, chosen by God. They knew this, but you got the nerve to run your mouth and talk about Moses. And I've talked about Miriam and Aaron in past audio and how they were just wrong. But see, Miriam ended up being punished with leprosy. You see, when one is being called, being chosen, appointed and anointed and there's those around them that you don't understand what's happening you should be quiet you shouldn't be running your mouth negativity will follow you i've witnessed it i've heard about it i was sad about it but people should have kept their mouth shut they could have they could have avoided a lot of issues because you knew god said i called the son i called the daughter or I called the husband, or I called the wife, or I called somebody in the family. And you know that they're turning their lives around. And yet you got the nerve to run your mouth and say negative things. And then you wonder why you have these issues. Or maybe somebody did that about you. And now mama, daddy, sister, brother, cousin, and everybody else is wondering why all this negativity is coming upon them. It is nerve wracking. It is disheartening. Somebody ought to fear God. I know when I was out there in the world and I saw some interesting things happening and these people called themselves Christian. I had enough good sense to shut my mouth. <laughs> Matter of fact, I didn't want no Christians around me because I knew strange things happen when you mess around and you're not in the right. But some of you all, you just found out. People lost a son. messing around 
with believers. People lost a mother. People lost a father. People lost... I mean, you see, you all can recognize this. Some of you all who study the entertainment industry and the negativity in the entertainment industry, along with the satanic opposition, the witches and the warlocks and the mediums and the spiritists and the evil and the good wars and all of that. Okay. You recognize that a child can be sacrificed on the dark side, a mother, a brother, a best friend, what have you. Because somebody wants to move up in the ranks. But what is very nerve wracking. Is to know that you don't have to be a part of any type of organization whatsoever. Never gave a sacrifice of anything. Never gave an oath of anything. But yet one day you decided to talk wrongly about a believer. That God has chose appointed and anointed. There's a difference between that one that's out there just bragging and talking crazy about, oh, you mess with me and bad stuff happened and all that versus one who they're not doing all of that. And somebody gets their life cut short. It makes me nervous even thinking about it. Makes me a bit concerned about some people and what's coming out their mouths. It's only a matter of time. The story of Job, book of Job. Oh, and one other thing. You can always confess sin and repent if you know that you're guilty, you see. Or if you know someone who's guilty of that sort of thing and they've said a lot of mean-spirited things about you and they know not what they say. So when we talk about Job, this was a good man, and yet all, the, all these bad things happened to him. But see, the thing about Job was that he kept his faith. Even though all these familial challenges are all around, I'm still going to trust the one true God. Even though, God, I know that you are prematurely, you know, or not prematurely, but other people are prematurely cutting their lives short, messing around, calling themselves, trying to box with you. Mm, Lord Jesus, I'm still going to hold fast to my faith. Even though there are those who are hating and saying all sorts of negativity and calling us false prophets and false believers because of whatever they deem a prophet is supposed to look like or a prophet is. But that's OK. I trust in the one true God and I'm still trusting in him. You see, he told me that many were going to fall around me a long time ago. After my 40 day plus fast. Jacob and Esau's reconciliation. Genesis 33. There was the estrangement and deception that went on. With these two brothers. And let's just call it for what it was. The mom started it. There's many a parent who started it. But eventually, there's the forgiveness and the healing that takes place. You got to make sure that you put your anger in the right place. That you realize where it all started. Some people are so worried. Well, maybe I'm not forgiving if I'm... You need to, first of all, go through the healing process. You can't get to forgiveness if you don't even know what the root cause is that made you upset with your brother, with your sister in the first place. And once you do know it, if that person is willing to sit down and have the dialogue, great. If they're not, you continue on with your life and you just put them in God's hands. That's what I did over the years. I said that I'm going to put all these family members in God's hands because all of them seem to act like teenagers in terms of how they hold on to things and then they get this little nastiness and meanwhile I picked up on some of it and I didn't like it and so I knew I had work to do too it wasn't just about what everybody else was doing and part of that work showed up in the various books that I uh that I wrote it was a journey to get to a place where I said I'm not going to keep going through the fire like this 
I need to allow God to lead me, to guide me. And somebody right now in the name of Jesus, you need God like never before to lead you, to guide you out of the darkness concerning your family, out of the suppression and oppression, out of the various times where you felt offended and angered. I need release. Hallelujah, says someone. I need peace of mind, says someone else. I need healing. Somebody else says I need all of the above. And we agree, we agree with you that God is going to bring about the healing that you need sooner rather than later. I thank you as always for taking time out to listen. Please do check the description box for anything that is of interest. You've been listening to YouTube, NM Enterprise 7. Feel free to like, subscribe, comment. And if you feel so moved to give, please do.